So you don't have to do this. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm telling you that this is the way I live my life. And you can listen and then if it applies to you and you want to do it, then you do it. If you don't, then don't do it, all right? I just want to say that first. Now, this is the way I live my life, all right? Now, I, I understand this world is more spiritual than it is physical. So let me say that again. This world is more spiritual than it is physical, so voices are always coming and going, right? Thoughts in your mind, not all of them are yours, right? Some of them are good, some of them are not. Some of them are, you know, uh, the enemy's way of tricking you or, or trapping you or setting you up. Some of them are not. And um, it's called spiritual warfare. And then also, you know, feelings. You know, you get them, you catch them, they go they up, down, up, down, up, down. You feel sad one moment, you feel, uh, you know, and, and, and every, life is like, you find yourself like this a lot, right? Like, you listen to uh, music, uh, depending on what it is, you might feel up. If it's uh, hype music, you might feel down. If it's sad music, and around and around we go. So, I'm 35 years old, I, I, I lived long enough to figure out some things of, of you know, the way that w the world works and functions, right? Not just myself, but people. So let me just tell you, given all that information, how I live my life, and again, you don't have to do it, but this is the way I live my life. Number one, I hear voices, okay? Different voices, different spirits, different thoughts. Some of them are good, okay? I'm going to tell you what they say. Some of them are good. Some of them. So let me just tell you what they say as an example. Uh, so I heard a voice earlier today say that you're God's favorite among, among the chosen. You're God's favorite, okay? Uh, some of the voices uh, say different things, right? Uh, and these are just me going about my business and I just hear the voice, right? So this is every day in my life. And for you, it's like that too, but it's different voices saying different things, right? It's like that for everybody, okay? So, you know, some of the voices uh, say, like what I just said, that's a voice that I remember because it just said it not too long ago. And there's other voices that they say God doesn't love you, right? Within the same hemisphere right here, all of that's going on. Some of them are up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So I bowed out. I bowed out a couple years ago. I decided I can't do this. I can't be like this, like a yo-yo. Whether, you know, <laughs> if I'm getting positive feedback or negative feedback. So what I do is I push it all to the side. Right? And I follow my, my own fruit. Right? My own fruit tells me how I'm doing. That's how I, how I judge myself. So I look at what am I doing, right? So I do like a little inventory check there. How am I doing today, as an example? Like let's say I want a progress report, right? What am I doing with God? Often that's a question that I'm, I have. I'm just being real with you. I want to know how I'm doing with Him. Right, because I I happen to fear God, and I uh, think about Judgment Day and stuff like that. You know, maybe you do too. I don't know. So this is what I do. Okay, I I first of all I judge myself by my fruit. Right? Is there anything that I'm doing that is wrong? Is there anything that I'm doing that could uh, be illegal in the eyes of God? Is there anything I got to repent for? Right? And so these are like some simple little basic questions. But then I ask myself, what are you doing that's right? What are you doing that's good? What are you doing that you could be proud of? Right? And like that's a good way to see where you're at, where you gauge. Right? And that's all biblical. The Bible says uh, in different areas. One, you'll know them by the fruit. And two, the Bible says that don't think of yourself as you're all of that. I'm paraphrasing. The Bible says, don't think of yourself more highly than you should. Rather, judge yourself by your actions, by your deeds. And so, 
I'm just I'm I'm a biblical person, man. I just I follow the Bible. So uh, the Bible also says, "Be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word." So I try to do that too. So with the voices in my head, I don't pay too much attention to them, okay? Because I've lived this long enough to to see how Satan moves. The Bible says, "You're not." Uh, the, 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 the disciples said in the Bible that we are not ignorant to the devices of the devil that we're aware we understand how the enemy operates and how he works so sometimes he he operates through a video that you'd be watching on on uh, YouTube as an example I will share this uh, sometimes I go on the, the YouTube feed and I'll go to the bottom left hand corner and it says shorts and I'll click there right and it's just short videos that, that are 60 seconds or less and it, it automatically goes to the next one, right? Or, or no, it doesn't. You have to flip it, right? And so some of those 60 second um, videos, they're, they're positive, right? It's like somebody uh, doing a, a good thing, you know, feeding the homeless, uh, but other, other short videos are not good, right? And so I saw one where the guy is a drug addict and he's like, he's trying to get rehabilitated, right? But he's not there yet. And uh, they're talking about drugs and stuff like that. It's a 60 second little clip, right? And his girl is in the car, front seat. And she's like, hey, can I smoke a blunt? He's like, why do you want to smoke a blunt? And then they're like having a, t a talk. And she's like, oh, but it's so sweet. I really want to and this and that. She's jonesing. And, and that's pretty much the whole clip right there, like. He's telling her, don't do it. She's saying, oh, but please, I want to. And then and then she's like, all right, all right, don't, don't lower your voice. You don't have to scream. That's how the video ends, right? Now, that type of video, that content right there leaves an impression on you. Whether you, whether you, whether you perceive it or not, whether you understand it or not, it leaves a seed. It leaves something with you where even when you keep on scrolling, you digested something that wasn't supposed to be in your system. It leaves a taintedness. It leaves a... That's the best way I could describe it. Taintedness. Contamination. And you know it because... It leaves... Uh, it could, uh, uh, You know when you're tainted or you're contaminated? Because it acts at, either as an insecurity... Or it acts as a, a thought that you play over and over again. So meaning it keeps recurring over and over again. It keeps getting brought up in your memory bank. You saw it, but now it's like playing over and over again. That's how the devil brainwashes you. And that's how he uses your mind against you. So that you could uh, entertain the thought long enough. So obviously if you just roll the tape over and over again, that's how you get, uh, you give in to something like that, right? You entertain it long enough and then, uh, yeah, you buy into it, you receive it. So when that happens, I plead the blood of Jesus, I repent, and I cast it out. So, okay, these are the three things you got to do. When you feel like the enemy is working with something that you listened to or you watched, and you feel like he's working with it because, like I said, it acts like an insecurity, or it acts like something that, that's trying to draw you in to do it. Draw you in, like pull you in, right? And, like, for example, when I was... Um, sober already a few years I watched um, the show Intervention which is all about drugs and people you know doing it and then in the end they, they have a, a, a possibility to get uh, clean and a rehab and all that and so I used to watch this show back in the day when I was on drugs and it used to trigger me to go and purchase it so then I was sober, I was clean for a period of time, I want to say four or five years. And then I was flipping through the channels one day and I came across it, I said, oh look. But I've been clean now, right? Walking with Jesus, the whole thing. And so I started watching it and then instantly as I'm watching it, I start to feel the, the uh, demonic powers, the demons that utilize this type of thing as a weapon to to provoke somebody to come back into that realm in that world you have to understand that in the drug world demons live there they dwell there they 
that is their domain. Demons are rampant in the party life. That's where they they love it. Okay, that's their home. You have to know that. And so, as I'm watching this, you know, the demons, I don't know if you know this, but yes, they can come through the screen, right? Well, you know that because when you watch stupid movies like The Exorcism uh, or this or that, there's a reason why people, when they shut the TV off and they go on about their business, it, they, they shut the TV off, but they, they, they carry that demon with them. And to their dreams, they get nightmares, they feel a certain type of way, and all kinds of... En- People call it energy. Oh, that's bad energy. It's a demon. That's what they're calling. The energy, they're calling the energy a demon. I mean, that's what it is. They don't have, uh, you know... They don't know how to define it, but that's what it is. It's a demon. So, I'm just teaching you the different types of ways that that I've I, I conduct myself now. Uh, unconsciously, I just if I feel a certain type of way, I understand what I gotta do. I gotta cut the flow. I can't allow that thing to permeate and to grow as an insecurity, or I can't allow that thing to just stay on me and blemish me. Because God is coming back for a bride that is dressed in white, not blemished. So you got to plead the blood of Jesus, wash yourself, cleanse yourself, remove the stain, and then go and sin no more. Go and don't do that no more, right? Like, don't go back to, to that place that you got blemished, right? And that's where self-control comes into play, and that's where, uh, quite frankly, you have to die to the flesh, right? pick up your cross and follow him that's that's the part where people have a hard time right everybody everybody on planet earth uh i don't care how exalted they are in ministry like it, you have to stay close to jesus in order for that not to affect you you understand C- stay close to jesus and those things will be disgusting to you but disconnect yourself from jesus and those things will be entertaining to you and they'll be attracted to you and you'll be attracted to it because you're disconnected from the source of life. And then that source is death. So automatically you're withering away just by dis- being disconnected by from Jesus. It's biblical. Everything I'm saying. So, um, so yeah, the key there is if you connect yourself to Jesus, you won't want those things. Period. Right? But if you do fall... Uh, quickly like get back up and you know so that's how you address that so the voices in your head um like i said everybody has them right we have ministering spirits that the bible says that we uh, that god has given us those that will inherit salvation have ministering spirits uh ministering spirits are angels and so angels will talk to you but demons will talk to you too then your own conscience will talk to you and then you'll have your own thoughts, right? So look how many, how many different uh, avenues or roads uh, that voices could come from. Quite frankly, it sometimes it could get a little confusing. Like, who's talking to me now? That's why the Bible talks about my sheep know my voice, right? My sheep know my voice, and to another they won't follow. To a stranger's voice they won't follow. So get to know God's uh, voice and and, um, don't fall for the stranger's voice, the one that tries to set you up as if he is God, because the devil loves to try to play God that's one one of his favorite things to do, is to play God and so one of the ways to know if it's uh, God or not is line it up with the word, line it up with the Bible you know, That's that's a beautiful way to know if it's God or not line it up with the word because not, not only, and get this, okay, because this is how the devil tricks people. Only because it's a positive word doesn't automatically mean that it came from God. Oh, no, it's positive. I heard something good. Sometimes it takes something positive for you to follow it. And then what I've learned about the devil is that, get this, all right, this is one of the ways he works take this as an example if somebody wanted to kidnap you because that's what he wants to do he wants to 
take you and 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 move you towards his kingdom and and imprison you ultimately that's what he wants to do but how could he do that if you are say with god or you're trying to move towards god right? if you're guarded if you're aware of his existence i'm speaking of the devil if you're aware of the devil's existence and you're trying to protect yourself and defend yourself and you're not trying to be victimized how would the devil the one one that's been here millions of years and understands people better than you uh, how would you think that he would approach you do you think that he would tell you something that you completely resist right off the back because it's such a flat lie or would do you think that he would do it slowly subtly and inch by inch okay there's some people that are so blind so deceived that he just gives them uh, elephant uh, elephant lies like the size of an ele elephant he tells them like they're so out there already that he like those people they'll, they'll believe anything because they don't know who they are they don't have an identity their mind is fried they're blind deaf and dumb and those those lies they're like hey you're a girl okay I'm a girl it's like they don't question they don't reason they don't logic they don't have a, a really a foundation to really analyze artifacts like they, 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 they don't know where to start they just buy into anything that comes up in here and they live it out just like that you know like the wind comes hits you it's like that's how they are with their thoughts like they buy into all of them the Bible talks about casting down imaginations that exalt themselves imaginations that the devil puts there to cat to, to to get you to fall to get you to be entrapped so one of the one of the ways that the devil tricks you and, and ensnares you is that if you're aware and you're trying to do right and you've you failed long enough and you want to get your life right and you're you're, you're trying to get away from from the things that, that that you know that bring you down one of the ways is that he might spin it in a way where it looks harmless it looks innocent enough it looks like okay I'll go there that's I can do that but you don't know that that's phase one right he's trying to take you home the home plate and that's just first base so he understands that that that's not your final destination you think it you think it's just there and back I'm just gonna go there and back to God I'm just gonna go there and then I'm going to return back to what I know to be <coughs> where I belong. And the enemy's like, there in first base, there's going to be a person waiting for you to lead you to second base. It's going to be an old friend, somebody that you're familiar with, somebody that you like, somebody that, that the enemy has studied you and understands that this person has the ingredients to get you to follow them. So then that person is going to have free drugs, Free this, free that. The temptation is going to be there, and also the peer pressure, and also this, that, and the other. Right? He, 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 he will knock on your door, right? And see if you answer, right? And so he uses all of all of your feelings and your thoughts and this and that. And that's what you didn't know when you originally bought into a a lie that it was going to be. It was just going to be, you know. Yes, it's going to be alcohol there, but I'm not going to drink. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just going to sit on the couch the whole time, watch everybody else drink, but I'm not going to drink. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't work out that way. Right? And, uh, yeah. So, and even if even if you're that one chance that, that is like, yes, you see, I didn't drink, guess what? It, it sold it in, into your conscious or your mind or your heart. You looked at, you took a thousand pictures with your memory. Everything, you know, you looked around. Everybody's partying and this and that, and you, you just, you were in the ambience, right? You now you're walk, you're walking back to the house. You're like, yes, I didn't drink. But now you're at night. You're at home. You're laying down. You're thinking about the, and like the enemies there, the demons, right? And they're and they're, they're playing with your insecurities. They're playing with your feelings. They're playing with all these kinds of things. Making you feel like you should have drank, right? And that's how it is. And then the next day you relapse. 
all because you weren't supposed to be there in the first place. And so, I'm gonna make a part two because I gotta go right now. But it's just some uh, practical uh, things to watch out for and to and not to be a victim. God bless you guys.